juvenile justice is something that really has begun only in the last century. A hundred years ago, um, the rule was that children as young as nine were locked up in the adult detention facilities, adult jails, with adults. Once you hit nine, you could be locked up in an adult jail. Juvenile justice began reforming at the beginning of the last century. Um, one of the first was to start appointing specific special judges to deal with juveniles. Um, Chatham County had its first juvenile court judge in about 1910. Um, and then for the next 90 years, we went through different cycles of a little more focus on the children as children, and then things would slide back and then more focus on children as children. When I first became a judge in uh, 2012, it was clear to me that we were locking up too many kids. Chatham County of all 159 counties had the highest rate of detention and out of home placement for delinquent kids than any other county in Georgia. And that saddened me. In Chatham County, not unlike the rest of Georgia, we were committing juveniles to a system. And the juveniles really, in my mind, should not have never have been committed. And they were being committed for behavior that would not be a crime for an adult. And the juveniles were actually at a rate in Chatham that much higher than Georgia. We had too far too many um, young people being incarcerated or referred to juvenile court. That often involves students of color and generally male students of color. We as a society have not understood that children are children and that they should not be treated as adults when they do things that are delinquent acts. If a child comes to court and they have a trial, or as we call it in the juvenile world, an adjudication, and after that adjudication we determine that the child committed what they're accused of, we make a finding that they have committed a delinquent act. For most people, that's where it stops. They've committed delinquent acts, so now they pay the adult price. But juvenile code is different. Juvenile code treats juveniles as juveniles. It should. In 2014, the Georgia Juvenile Code was changed so that detention was not the primary focus for changing children's behaviors. The focus was addressing the underlying issues at home, in the school, and with the children. As a result of juvenile justice reform in, that went into effect in 2014, Governor Deal uh, sought the assistance of the Annie Casey Foundation to provide technical assistance to local governments to help implement the newly enacted law. Thankfully, Annie Casey Foundation um, turned their attention quickly to Chatham County because our numbers were so bad. And I should add, uh, being the, a county that had the highest rate of detentions and out-of-home placements, we also had a very high recidivism rate. So Annie Casey invited us to um, accept their assistance, and we did. They took us on a number of site visits to see what other jurisdictions were doing to address the problems that we identified locking up too many kids, for one, and not having good outcomes. They also worked with us in engaging our stakeholders, other persons and agencies in the community, to figure out a way to be more impactful with children in the community, whether they've committed an offense or not. 
So we have a, a priority team called Quality of Life. And within that, we measure key indicators that have to do with juvenile recidivism and juvenile data. And part of what we want to do with that priority team is to make sure that we are keeping an eye on those indicators and also working collectively with community partners who touch the juvenile justice system. My role and the, and the school district's role was to first recognize the role that we played in increasing the number of referrals to juvenile court for school-age youth. And that was very enlightening. As we looked at those numbers, we were alarmed because we were one of the top referrers uh, to juvenile court for school-age youth. And that made it very challenging for us. At the time of that discovery, I was serving in the role of chief academic officer, and we had the opportunity then to not only examine the data, but also to make a plan to reduce those referrals. You know, I learned that Chatham County and Savannah, the poverty rate was so high. Um, logistically, just even things like transportation, you know, even some of the programs that we came up with, we really didn't understand how difficult it would be for some of our young people and their families to take advantage of them until we started the programs and realized our staff had to go and pick them, pick the children up. I don't have a dress code in my courtroom. You know, most judges expect people to come to court dressed, what I've heard some say appropriately. Um, and again, because of poverty, because of lack of good transportation, public transportation, I have parents who sometimes have to walk from the bus stop, you know, different bus stops, or have to come straight from work. I have children who, with their families, are living in hotels. So I quickly realized having a dress code could result in families coming to court and being sent home because they weren't dressed appropriately. Uh, and I just didn't see that there was a need for that when the family and the child is in crisis um, and that they probably were doing the best that they could just to get there at the appointed time. I had one family, I was told it took them three hours to get here from their neighborhood in Windsor Forest on the, on the city bus. Three buses between wait time, travel time, it was a three hour one way trip to the courthouse. Chatham County was leading the state with the number of commitments and children being incarcerated. Um, in Chatham County, we have a facility, a 100-bed facility here, and many times that facility was uh, well over capacity. So as a result, we would have to um, transfer those kids out to other facilities throughout the state of Georgia. So it was a hardship for families to be able to visit with their kids in facilities that were in the Atlanta area or even further, because we had facilities all the way up in the mountain areas in Dalton, Georgia. So imagine a family from Chatham County with a child in a facility that was in Dalton, Georgia. Um, they could always talk over the phone, but being able to see your child and your child seeing you was more effective in terms of um, keeping that connection to the family, but also giving that child some hope that they have some support at home. Through a process of discussion and, and goal setting and collaboration, we came up with uh, what we call three SMART goals, ways to address issues that we saw that affected children and, and their relationship to the juvenile justice system. Uh, one that we set was called community conferencing. In community conferencing, we realize that a lot of things that are referred to the court as delinquent acts are really just disputes among people that could be settled other than going through a court process, labeling a child a delinquent, and really placing them on a, a downward path for the rest of their life. The probation officers at juvenile court have a way to divert that youth. And so they can divert the youth to our program that's called community conferencing. So we bring the youth, their family, the people that have been harmed, 
and any other support resources that we find that that youth may need. It may be a mentor. It may be more information for the parents about housing. We bring all of those support resources together and we create a circle. And so the Mediation Center has a facilitator that facilitates everyone coming together and helps go through a process. How has everyone been affected? What would you like to see different? And when they all come together and create an agreement about how they can move forward in a better, more positive way. The youth may say that they'll agree to do so many hours of community service. They may say that they're going to become involved in some pro-social activity. And so as part of that agreement, we track and help the youth move forward with that plan that they've helped create. This also provides an opportunity for that person harmed to talk about how they were affected. And so in this circle, they're able to be vulnerable and share and what an impact that makes for the youth to be able to hear how someone else was affected by their actions. So that youth is able to take accountability and really have a transformational experience because we've created this circle in which they can come together and talk about what's happened. I recall one child in particular that we put in a summer work program. The child wouldn't look at you in the eye. The child wouldn't talk to his parents. Sitting in my courtroom, the child was sitting leaning one way and his parent was sitting beside him leaning as far away as possible from him. This child got a job in the summer through one of our programs. Within a few weeks, he was dressing differently. Within a month, they gave him a raise. At the end of the summer, they offered him continuing employment. He came back to court. He had a completely different affect. He was bright, smiling, and the mom and the son were sitting next to each other, actually holding hands. Children come to juvenile court for delinquency matters, uh, meaning those are cases that are crimes if they had been an adult, and also children in need of services. Those are cases or charges only children can be charged with, and ungovernable, not listening to their parent, not going to school, run away. Uh, those children are being locked up as well, and they really don't pose any risk to society. They're more of a risk to themselves, and they needed help, but they were being incarcerated. Um, it, it's I likened it to taking a person who's a little bit sick and taking them to the hospital and they get sicker because they're around sicker people and getting a level of attention that they don't need from people who are also around sicker people. So we really worked hard to figure out a way to help those young people get what they need and quickly get them away from the court. Uh, that is why we started The Front Porch. The Front Porch's role was to bring those kids and families, be a, a resource to kids and families in this community for kids that are not involved in the court system. And the whole purpose was to keep them out of the court system. The juvenile code allows for the juvenile court to divert cases. And when I say divert cases, those are cases where law enforcement have actually filed complaints and they come out to the juvenile court. So we have a diversion team that look at those, those cases and determine if they are appropriate for the front porch. And that's to keep the kids from entering into the system. Those kids are currently do not have a juvenile court record. And the whole purpose is so that we don't widen the net in bringing kids um, into the system. One area that we focused on in Chatham County is diversion of low risk youth away from juvenile court, in particular to the front porch. Approximately 40% of the children that come to juvenile court have mental health diagnoses. 70% of them are not being treated. Uh, we take walk-ins. Families can just call us and say they're having issues or problems with their kids, and we take them, but also law enforcement officers. Um, there are a lot of municipalities around Chatham County. I think there's eight, I believe. But they also come into contact with families in the community that they develop relationship with and families who reach out to them when they're on their beat in their neighborhoods who are looking for some help for their children. So we receive those referrals. What we do is we call, call those families in and we schedule assessments on them. 
Uh, we use the pediatric symptoms checklist and the craft um, questionnaire when we're meeting with those families and um, those children. And based off those assessments and the information we received in those meetings, then we make appropriate referrals in their community um, based on the information we receive from the families. Um, we keep cases open for at least 90 days and we case manage those cases, making sure that those, can those families are connected to the referrals that we sent them to in terms of resources in the community. But we also assess the family to determine how they're doing, how the kids are doing, and to determine if there are any continued needs for that family. Sometimes if the only tool you have is a hammer, then everything looks like a nail. So if the only solution that you know of is to make a referral to juvenile court, that's what you do. So we've built in a system that allows us to recognize problems and then make referrals to an agency or several agencies that allow us to get to the bottom of that problem to find out what's the best solution, not necessarily referring students to juvenile court. There are some instances where referral to juvenile court is appropriate. But in most instances, it indicates, the problem indicates that there are other solutions that are necessary and more appropriate for dealing with the situation at hand. We work very closely with the uh, public school system and with either the teachers that make direct referrals, school resource officers actually make referrals to us as well, and actually the social workers. So. We are also receive our largest number of referrals from the school board, which is a no brainer. It makes sense because kids spend most of their time in the school system. They spend most time, most, more of their time in school. So a lot of those referrals come to us and we're able to keep those kids out of the juvenile justice system. Looking forward in the next 10 years, what I would like to see is the data supporting that the projects and the programs we're using are effective, that they are changing the outcomes for children and families, and that we're addressing what really is an intergenerational problem and we're breaking that cycle. And 10 years from now, I honestly wish there would be no need for a juvenile court. I know that seems odd, but I, I really do. There was a time where there was no juvenile court. Um, you know, and young people, the village showed up and they got what they needed, or if they did act out, the village just showed up and wrapped around them and helped them get back on track. Uh, it, it would truly warm my heart if we did not have a need for juvenile court. In a decade, the Mediation Center would love to see the youth that we're currently providing conferences for we would love to see those youth actually be the facilitators for the youth of tomorrow. In a decade, what we'd like to see is a number of agencies in place that can offer immediate assistance and appropriate assistance to students and families who may be in distress. I want the future for children in Chatham County to be hopeful. I want a place where all children can thrive in the community. And I want an even playing field for children in the community. I want to see one day where families will have a better grip on their children, uh, will be resourceful in, in navigating the system and knowing where to go to help their children. That's what I will define as a success, as we empower parents to take back over their children without other people having to tell them what to do. I envision a brighter future for youth in Chatham County, thereby having a brighter, less criminal future for the citizens of Chatham County. The youth are our adults of tomorrow.